Hey guys, Alex from European Coffee Tree Brothers behind the camera and right now we are standing in front of the Deutsche Museum in Munich. And the reason we came is because inside there is one of the biggest coffee exhibition in the world. It's called Cosmos Coffee and this is what we're going to show you in this video. We are meeting Sarah, who is a food chemist, but also creator of Cosmos Coffee exhibition, and she will tell us more about it. I think that's the main story behind Cosmos Coffee, actually. The whole exhibition is all, all about that we want to show coffee in, in all pers perspectives, like show the people behind the 20 million farmers, the smallholders, but also the roasters, the baristas and the con consumers as well. So it's not just about the farmers, but also about us in the global north. And yeah, that's the main thing, raise awareness, but nevertheless have fun drinking coffee. So this is very popular part of the exhibition. It's where people can simulate what does it take to plant the coffee tree and they, they can see it in a real time during this visual reality app. And right now I'm growing my coffee tree. And see, you can see my plant. My production is about 469 grams of green coffee bean what means I get about 47 cups of coffee. And here you can be a scientist, like, like a chemist, like, like, like me. We have a coffee flavor, which is um, separated in single flavor compounds. So coffee mm -hmm. aroma consists of 23 compounds, and every individual compound smells different. So for example, Mm -hmm. um, you have the coffee flavor here, you can smell, and then you can, yeah, and then you can separate it, for example, to, uh, let's go on, my favorite one is this one, a uh, compound which smells like black currant, and you can uh, you can have a smell, and this it's is, from there? yeah, and it's really, I don't know if, if, if mm -hmm. you can see the black currant, Wow. And that's, that's the fruity, <laughs> fruity thing. Like you can really see that oh, coffee is con cons consisting of so much flavor compounds. It's a very, very popular part of the exhibition is actually this roasting machine where people coming to see it can actually roast their own coffee and wait until it cools down and then they can take it with them as a present. So this is really interesting. Here you can see the coffee bean and dev development of the coffee bean from green coffee to brown one and you have also different stages of the roasting. So you start with the green coffee at around 22 uh, degrees of Celsius and you end up with the Italian rose at a temperature of about 245 degrees Celsius. And you can see with the microscope details of the coffee bean here. When you see the espresso machine, you always think, what is inside? And right here, you can see La Marzocco Leva machine break down, explode it. So you can see all the different parts there. Which is the, the most special espresso machine here? You can ask my personal opinion. Okay. For me, it's the Bialetti from 1933 that's over there. It's the first prototype Bialetti mocha can from 1933, handmade by Alfonso Bialetti. Wow. And which seems so boring because it's just like there's no electricity behind. But you can see it nowadays everywhere on the on the globe. And back then, Alfonso Bialetti was so insecure about the success of this maker, actually, that he had like 20 years of like hard times to um, even make money with it. And nowadays you see it everywhere. And I think that's a humble little thing being so pretty. But for the, for the visitors, I think it's the La Cornuta in the middle. Of, um, it's a famous uh, machine by La Pavoni made by Tio Ponti, and it's worth 400,000 euros. So it's the most valuable coffee maker worldwide. How difficult was it to convince them to, to borrow you this one? Hard, 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 hard. Yeah, and they want to have it back next, next year. But still, for one year, you can see it in, in Munich. It's a unique masterpiece. So in this part of the exhibition, you can see the development of the coffee brewing over the time. So you start in 1450 with this, with this coffee maker and you continue 
over several hundred years until 2019. It would be a pity to come to the coffee exhibition without having a chance to actually drink coffee. So that's why there is a science cafe where Jana is usually <laughs> serving you a cup of coffee that you can take with you and enjoy the whole exhibition over there. People come more excited about coffee after they go around. They get really excited when they go through because then they always come because then here they grow their coffees and here they can taste their coffees basically. So uh, that's quite a nice feature and people get more interested because I always feel like as soon as you have knowledge about something you're more like eager to taste new things and different things. So I definitely feel that. So how do you want people to feel? What would you think that, uh, or what do you wish they would take away from the exhibition? I would wish that they love coffee even more, that they go out of this exhibition and say like, oh, and now I want to try a coffee of Soul Cream, or that they're craving even more for a coffee, and they appreciate it even more, that they value it more, pay a higher price for it, so the farmer gets out more, and also that they have a better coffee experience, better quality, better tasting coffee. So in the end, it's all, a, all, a, all about making, making it all better for everyone in the supply chain. It's so we hope that you enjoy this video. There is so many things that coffee lover can learn from this exhibition. So if you have one or two hours in Munich, it's definitely worth your time. Thank you again for watching and I hope to see you in the next video very, very soon. Bye bye.